Okay. Good afternoon again, everyone. Really nice to see you back. I just popped along to see how they were doing before we started, and they are sitting in the most beautiful circle, all listening to the teachers really, really well. And I, I said to them that I was going to come along and check if the adults were as good as they are at sitting in the circle. Set a task. They're looking, they're looking really, really good. Anyway, today we're going to talk about first school days and we're going to talk about getting ready for school. Um, tomorrow we are particularly going to take a wee look at health and well-being and we're going to be joined with somebody from Cordia to talk specifically about the lunches, how the lunches and the breakfast club work and about um, you know, any dietary requirements that anybody needs to discuss and then all start to So first school days and getting ready. Now, I'm going to talk about routines. I will not be the first person to talk to you about good routines with your child, I'm sure. If you think back to when your child was very young, it's the kind of thing that you heard from the health visitor. It's absolutely the kind of thing that we've been talking about in this room. And I'm going to repeat it again, because that's what we're all part of the same process. When they start school, they will be absolutely exhausted, I guarantee it. It is quite different than the children organising the organised learning. We'll be doing a lot of listening, we'll also be playing hard, we're very physically active, and we will get tired. Um, please remember to try and get them into routine before they start, because they're going to bed nice and early, so when they wake up in the morning, they're bright. Um, well rested and ready to concentrate. Um, I know it's very really difficult in the summer with the late nights. Sometimes it's really difficult to get them to sleep at night. Um, it's a little bit later. And the summer holidays are a time when we can to with the families anyway. If you could have a wee thing, maybe the week, week or so before, trying to, trying to change your routine, trying to get them into bed a wee bit earlier so that they're ready um, to make a good start. And obviously, if your child is in bed really, it's a wee break for you as well, as a parent. Um, and spend time over the holidays doing again what, what we can do. The nurses, nurses have been encouraging to do in encouraging independence. So we're looking at clothing, being able to get your coats on, zipped up, being able to change the gym, because that can be quite a lot of personal organisation for the child. Um, practicing buttons, zips, taking shoes on and off, and also encouraging them, if you can, to try and start to take a little bit of more personal responsibility for their belongings. When they're at school, they won't just have their clothing to look after, but they'll also have a school bag and they'll have a book bag. It's quite a lot for them to keep track of it get them in the way of remembering all the bits that belong to them and to check that they're not going to bring it to school and take them back again. Um, that's my like help. And if they have the name on the belongings as well, it's a, it's a big, big help. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially with bits of school uniform that look very similar, shoes that are similar, that kind of thing, it's a, it's a good help. It is. I've put in public toilets. This is where I hand it to Mr. Chambers because it seems to be something that is particularly relevant for the boys coming to school. So this <laughs> It's been a big part of my week for the last five years is <laughs> dealing with incidents in toilets. So um, for, for boys in particular, um, not all boys before they come to school get the experience of using a urinal. So if you're out and about, that's a good thing to get some practice at. If during the course of the, the induction afternoons if you want to take your children into our toilets so that they're used to them, so they know how to use them, um, and they're kind of familiar with where to find them, and that's, a, that's a really good start. Um, and I do think, particularly for the boys, maybe just a wee bit more than for the girls um, in that respect. And, and also, we're, we're, we're conscious that toilets don't always look the same all the way around the world. Um, and different families and different children, depending on where they come from, might have very different experiences of using the bathroom. Um, but we do only have one type of toilet here, so um, if, 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 it's going to, if it's likely to be different for your child than, than what they're used to, then it's good to give them an experience and have the opportunity to talk to them about that. 
So this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon when you're in the school, you're very welcome to take your children along and visit our, our boys and girls' parents and just make sure that they're familiar and comfortable and they know what to do. And as you're out and about over the summer, um, just encouraging them to be a wee bit more independent, making sure that they, they will be able to manage on their own. Um, because we really can help them with, with that part of the school day. We, we can't, we, we can't go in to cubicles with children, we can't help them with their toileting. So this is where we really need you to kind of do that bit for us. Um, also, it goes without saying, hand washing, good hand washing is so important. Um, little bugs, sickness bugs, go around the school very, very quickly. Um, so when the child is, you know, if, if we're exercising good hygiene, we limit the risk um, of those kind of situations. Um, also, if um, looking happy to the fact that your child is going to be in school, they're going to have a lunch in school, Encourage your child also um, to be healthy to do something that we could when we do school life, um, but also encouraging independence when using um, cutlery, um, organising themselves and that lunch. That is a great help because um, we find when they start school, um, the children can sit and lunch for a very, very, very long time because they're quite um, taken by all the so, just to talk through a um, bit of the curriculum, um, before um, we move on, this, the curriculum in Scotland is um, the curriculum for excellence, and there are three levels that are relevant to the primary school area. The early level starts at nursery and finishes at P1. There is quite a lot of work when they start school that might look a little bit like work that has been going on in nursery. We make no apology for that. We are all part of the same educational curriculum. The curriculum in Scotland runs from 3 right the way through to 18. Some of the work might seem a little familiar, but that's good. Okay. Um, and this is primary one. Then first level, primary two, Primary five and second level, yeah. primary five to primary seven, and obviously as we're moving through the school, we see the work, the basic work and the depth of work increase in complex. So that's just a very broad overview of the different levels of the curriculum. What we do is we spend a fair bit of time once the children have started inviting you in for curriculum workshops because we find that once the children have got into school, um, and the homework starts coming home, the reading books and so on, that's when people kind of feel they want to connect a little bit more with them, what's actually going on in the classroom. The things you can do um, to get the child in the way of school and, and get ready for school, to spot literacy, please take the time to explore like the sounds. Um, if your child's interested in making letter shape, letter formation, please do. That way. If they're not so interested, that's fine as well. Okay. Please um, take take the time to share rhymes and songs. It is very, very, very important for a child's auditory development that we spend a bit of time um, listening to the sounds and words, the patterns and words, listening to the endings because if the child is able to discriminate um, phonologically then that is a really important building brick in a child's reading development. So we do a lot of work on pattern and rhyme words, which is exactly what they will have been doing in nursery too. It's a very, very important skill for reading. But we also want reading to be fun. So wherever possible, it's fantastic if you can read with your child. Get into a, get into a library, borrow some books. Um, comics, anything at all. If your child sees you reading and sees you enjoying reading, then they will want to read it too. It's very simple. You are the role model for your child's learning development. So if you can, if you can sell it reading as, as an enjoyable, fun experience, then it's likely that the child will be interested. So all these things, how can you help take time to talk? 
top and that bends all I work on that you see. If you can get to Big Save Labour, which is an excellent labour leader, this year you'll know it was close to where you are there. And also rating together, looking at shopping lists, and seeing you write, it's really, really important. If then children can learn so much from observing you write, they observe the direction of writing, they will learn that words have individual components. And really, really, really strong um, indicator of, again, of children's writing success if they have that in this early experience of writing. Um, also, if you take the time when you're around, perhaps shopping or walking through town, to notice all the writing that is around, on signs, on um, packets, on notice boards, anything like that, environmental print is a really, really easy way to help children start to spot letters around them, um, and a really important um, and fun thing to do. So I'm going to move on to mathematics in the Chief. Which one to me about what was that? So in primary one, we've been looking at numbers, um, initially numbers one to ten, and then moving on to twenty, and for some of the learners we were looking um, hand in hand with that using money. Um, using coins, counting money up to 20 bits and we won't as well. But being familiar with, with the coins across the, the currency that we use. We're looking at 2D and 3D shape, naming those shapes, understanding the properties of those shapes and how we can use them. In measurement, we'll be looking at weight, length, and value. Um, in time, we'll be looking to work towards telling the time in whole hours. Um, I'll be looking at some more detail for some of the learners as well. We'll be looking at days of the week, months, seasons, and primary one over the last few years have tracked the seasons really closely and looked at seasonal change, and that's going to be a valuable part of understanding time across the year. And we'll be handling information using simple graphs. So things that you can be working on at home. Counting is, is a big, big part. Counting physical objects, but also learning just the, the learning to, to count up to 10 and beyond, and being familiar with that, being able to do it. Um, being able to do that one is a um, really, really, really valuable skill. Um, being able to match the numbers that they're counting with objects in front of them. Um, exploring numbers in their environment, like bus numbers. You know, in the street, the bus is going past, talking about what that number means. If you're saying numbers and print somewhere, asking your child to, to read them or encouraging them to ask you to read them to them. Um, any songs and rhymes that, that you know that are about number, um, and for those children who are in nursery, they, they may already be familiar with some of those, but continuing to read those those will help them as well. Practical activities like baking and gardening, sewing. Um, in, in Oak Grove we do cooking um, in school. We cook in every class every year. Um, and there are lots of opportunities within cooking day to day generally um, as you're measuring, as you're counting vegetables, as you're counting tins, um, and as you're doing shopping, things like that. And telling the time together, having a look at analog clocks and digital clocks and talking about um, the times of the day, and um, even starting to understand the, the, the sequence of those things and maybe get a real understanding of the times that you go to bed, the times that you get up times that certain things that are specific in the day happen. Hey. Um, so I'm part of my role at the moment um, is P, um, getting our children out, getting them healthy, getting them active. I'm in growth, um, all children, um, get two hours of PE, um, that's a Scottish government requirement, some schools aren't living on it, we are, we're consistently living on that. We have very active playtime. Significant changes to our playground. It's gone from a flat green space to having sand pits to having Castle Scotland, which is the wooden structure there, and having some lovely hills to play in. We get out and about in all types of weather, unless it is unsafe outside, they will be outside. So a pair of wellies, a waterproof jacket well, are an absolute must at Oak Grove. We have a movement program in primary one looking at getting children to, to develop different parts of their body and cross motor skills to, to turn in different directions to stand with their right foot to face different ways. We do a lot of work 
it is very much a shirt and tie high school. So it, it's, it, you know, for some families they decide to make a sort of rite of passage to get hold in. But you choose what's right for you. Certainly, all shirts tend to quite easy to the washing machine, and there is not so much ironing if that is attractive to you. If you love ironing, that's great. I don't. I love polo shirts. Um, if you could also have a think about footwear, you will need some indoor shoes. Okay? Our children go outside and they play on the grass and the mud and they play in the sand. So when we come in, we don't want all the sand and mud and all that coming into the classrooms, especially the new carpets in the new classrooms. So we ask our children, and we always have that enough to change the shoes. Now the cheapest, easiest solution is to get three black um, sand shoes. They don't cost much at all. And you can also use the sand shoes for other activities around the school. So they're very comfy. You can get the slip on ones where you, do, you just literally shove them on like a pair of slippers. Or you can get ones with a Velcro fastening. It's a bit of fiber or something like that. They're not, they're not expensive at all. And you can pick them up every way. You can get them in the supermarkets, you can get them in the shoe shops if you want to do them. But they're absolutely everywhere. You don't have to have black sand shoes if you've got another soft shoe in your shoe. That's fine also. But I would recommend you have, you really do need a change of shoes. Um, just one thing about the sand shoes is we have, we have noticed that um, once they're in school, because we want to keep them in school beside the child's pet, people tend to forget about them after that. And I would just ask you to remember that if your child goes up a size in the outdoor shoes, which you'll know about because they're coming home and you take the shoe, could you also remember that they'll need a new pair of indoor shoes? And it's really easy to forget about if you're not seeing them. Because if they're not coming home and you're not seeing them put them on off, then you kind of lose track of whether they're fitting or not. If you could just bear that in mind that when your child's going to have a size to replace the indoor shoes as well, otherwise we might have some sore, uncomfortable feet. Um, so that's the indoor shoes. Outdoor shoes, um, I do not require highly, you know, you know the school shoes that you see in the adverts just now, especially for the girls, beautifully polished, luckily dolly shoes, you know, your child is going to be playing in the mud and the sand, like I said, you do not need to have absolutely dainty, perfect feet shoes. I am much happier with the child coming to school. I'd rather see them in a pair of trainers, to be honest with you, because they need to play. The, the outdoor shoes are really only used in the playground, so if you think about the shoes, you can let like your child run about in the park in. That's probably the best fit, really. Also, laces. Um, none of these have laces. We want your child to get out to play. We don't want them to miss the break time because they're really trying to practice doing the laces. We could well support them in learning that skill, but we want them outside in fresh air. So, Velcro or slip on is always best. Please, please, please avoid high heels. I know that seems an incredible request because they're really young. And you wouldn't expect we want to have high heels. But you would be surprised. We do see them from time to time. It is not safe actually you're wearing those kind of shoes. Um, Velcro fasteners are great. And once the weather turns, it is wet. What? <laughs> it will. Um, I highly recommend a pair of wellies. Again, just absolutely basic wellies off the supermarket shelf, nothing expensive, nothing, you know, I know that there's a bit of a fashion the wellies just now, sometimes the older girls come in with like these brands and stuff, but really, they're going to get covered in mud, they do not need to be fancy. A flavour does get quite waterlogged and, um, you know, it's hard to keep the children out of the water, you know, it's very yeah, don't really want to. <laughs> so, if you could please bear that in mind. We do also a uh, normal swap shop in front of the school with uniforms. So if you find yourself running low and you're in, please take what's there and get the school shop in front of the school.
right flank is hand uniform and it's there to be used. There's no saying to jump and it's too small to sign up if somebody somebody eats that. So help yourself to eat it. Okay, update on the new school logo. I, I showed this to families who were here yesterday, I, I showed this to them. And one of the things about the new school logo, which, which is our logo that we've been using for some time in school, is that this is a sample that came from test scores yesterday, and as you can see, it's, it's not quite right, it's a bit egg-shaped, this should be rounded. So I spoke to Tesco Embroidery Service this morning, and they are going to adjust that and resend an emergency sample. But I won't get this tomorrow, but they are making adjustments. Now, when the sample comes into school, um, as long as I'm happy with it and you feel it's a perfect quality, it will be four days before it appears on online online service. So, plain safe, I do not believe that this will be available for sale online until the 6th of June. Now, if that suits you, if that time scale suits you, that's absolutely fine. You can proceed and you can purchase that online thereafter. Bear in mind that during the summer months, which is the busiest time of year for uniform ordering, obviously, you would look for three to four weeks home delivery. Okay? There is another way. If that just makes you feel a bit nervous, we could also, if you oh sorry, if you prefer, and um, you can order this jumper in school, as we have done in previous years with all our other jumpers. So we would need the order to be placed and paid in advance before. Friday the 17th of June. Okay. That gives my office staff two or three days to process the order, to raise the invoice and to send it off. And if you are ordering in school, it would be available for collection on the 11th and 12th of August, which are the two in service days when the people are in school those days. It's just for Monday the 8th. So, it's entirely up to you if you want to do the online service yourself and proceed that fine. If you would rather do it through the school, that is fine too. Tomorrow, because this information is very fresh to me, I literally had the conversation with Tesco's about half an hour before I came down this afternoon. <coughs> not had a chance to make up amended order forms with the new price, but I can have that ready for you tomorrow and we will be putting it into the post to families have not had a chance to attend. We'll put this information on the website as well. We will. We will. However, there is a third option. And if you want to go for a plain blue sweatshirt with no logo, that's fine as well. Because actually, many families do envy. Many families have found that compared with the previous company we were using, plain blue sweatshirts walk in the supermarkets was a cheaper option anyway. Right? So you don't have to buy a logo. It's nice and it looks smart, but if you want to go for plain blue, that is also fine. So, three options.